Hey, that was a really good workout, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, Woo, just going to fuel my body with some protein, a little chicken thighs here. We got a lot of butter on there. It's really good. The skin's on and everything. I'm ready to dig in. This is going to fuel my body. How much protein is in that? Oh, this is about 32 grams of protein. Perfect for a post-workout meal. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? GNG. GN, is that, oh, the wrapper? I love GNG. Gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis, the process by which glucose is derived from other sources in the body. Huge point of contention in the keto diet. The prevailing narrative is that excess protein is immediately converted into chocolate cake inside of your body. Small intestine. Small intestine? Yeah. Oh, small intestine. Yeah. But on a serious note, we actually did a ton of research on this topic. We want to fully understand this because it seems like no one really understands it. I just wanted to kind of like go through all the current data and kind of draw my own conclusions from it and see what I think and apply it to my diet moving forward. We, but yes, him, we. him also. Just me. So this definitely falls into the category of a little bit of information can be harmful because it seems like everyone has this little bit of information, excess protein, no one defines excess, is converted into glucose, sugar. Gluconeogenesis is pretty much constantly happening in your body, whether you like it or not. And when you're in a state of ketosis by nature, gluconeogenesis is occurring because your brain needs a little bit of glucose to run every day. So if you're not giving it that through diet, right. it creates that on its own. So you want gluconeogenesis to be happening. Otherwise, you would only be having like 60% of brain activity right now on a keto diet. Which seems like a lot of people are. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Good one. Because your brain can only actually run between 50 to 75% purely on ketones. So it needs some other fuel source. Right. So a lot of people who are doing no carb diets or lazy keto, where you're not eating a ton of vegetables or getting carbs through so some sources, this process is occurring and you want it to occur. Key takeaway, gluconeogenesis occurs on a need basis, not on a supply basis. So if your body needs glucose for whatever reason, it makes it. If your body has a ton of excess protein, it doesn't just combust into glucose inside your body. There's no, supply doesn't matter that much. If you're right. giving it a ton of excess protein, it doesn't mean the rate at which gluconeogenesis occurs in your body increases. increases. The rate is actually relatively fixed. The rate of gluconeogenesis slightly increases on a keto diet, about 14% increase. And that, that makes sense. Yeah, because obviously your brain needs some glucose. Right, and you're depleting your body of a lot of carbs. So your body, it's, it's trying to survive, essentially. Yeah, it's not getting it dietarily. Right. Um, everything we talk about will be linked in the description, all the studies. We have a lot of references for this video. It doesn't occur upon supply. So like when I eat a high protein meal like Matt did in the beginning of the video, 32 grams isn't a lot. No. But say you have like a 10 ounce steak and some ribs on the side, all of that protein isn't going to immediately convert to glucose or even be used immediately, right? It this takes, is a process. It's a mechanism. Pro yeah, there's a lot of mechanisms yes. that have to come into play in order for anything you eat to be utilized in your body. A lot of people who are testing their blood glucose, their ketones, they will see that when you're on a keto diet and you eat a excess protein meal, which I'll just throw a number on it right now. Let's say you eat 60 grams of protein in a meal. Your blood glucose will rise and your ketone level will drop, your blood ketone level. And those two things are actually inversely correlated. So like when your blood glucose rises, your ke blood ketone level generally drops or at least your ketone production drops. That does not mean your body is like 30 minutes after your protein meal, gluconeogenesis kicks into high gear and it's like converting all this excess protein into chocolate cake right it's actually just the insulin response to that protein meal because protein itself triggers an insulin response and that's magnified more on a low carb diet right most meals generally um, even are I, going to yeah even like very high fat meals yeah will have some sort of response, response in your body and again that's something you want right like you want your body to be regulating properly and for blood sugar to rise at times and drop at times like that's just how it works with protein it generally stays in the desired range though like with carbs you can shoot up to like super high blood glucose levels with protein it's not going to go that crazy high so speaking of excess protein there really is no definition of excess no. it's, it's all up to you and even then you're probably just making up some nonsense because 
there's nothing online. There's no sound research that tells you what excess is. Like excess, intentionally ambiguous. Exactly. Everybody functions differently. So excess to me could mean something completely different than it, than it does for Matt. Yes. And that's why you can't find this excess number online. And it, you can't find it for yourself either. Like you can't figure right. out how much is the optimal protein level for me personally. Right. It's it's a guessing game. One cool study, putting this a little bit to the test, compared a standard keto diet, traditional keto diet. That's like the 90% fat diet, the one designed for epileptic children, mm -hmm. to a modified Atkins diet, which is a little bit higher protein than the current ketogenic diet is. 35% of calories from protein, and 65% of calories from fat, that's modified Atkins, versus 90-10, 90%, 10%. And the decrease in seizures, the circulating blood ketones, pretty much every metric measurable was the exact same or very close. That's 35% of calories from protein. That's more than most keto dieters are doing mm -hmm. and no decrease in circulating blood ketones and the exact same benefits to seizures and treating of epilepsy. So that's one data point worth noting. And this is something that is very interesting and I think a lot of you guys will find interesting. The process of gluconeogenesis by nature is very inefficient because instead of just having glucose you're converting other things to glucose. That takes energy. When you're trying to lose weight, inefficiency is your friend. That's why you like do incline treadmill because it's so inefficient. That's why you do like high intensity interval training. Just all these inefficient things make your body adapt better. The process of converting protein to stored body fat is nearly impossible and it's like the most inefficient mechanism you can come up with. First you have to convert it to glucose, then you have to convert it through de novo lipogenesis to adipose tissue. Right, so de novo means, I went to law school, de novo oh. means to start over. Um, oh, okay. It's a Latin phrase. So that means to turn a protein into glucose. That's one whole process. Then it starts all over and has to convert the glucose to fat. Therefore, the efficiency drops. Yes, so the efficiency of converting protein to stored body fat is estimated at 44% efficient. And that's a good thing. Yeah, that's a good thing. So like, it's hard to get fat eating a lot of protein is basically one takeaway. It's also very satiating. Protein is the most satiating macronutrient. Right. Okay, so that's basically all the data there is, all the scientific articles, That studies. we came across that were worth noting. Yep. We'll link all of those in the description. You guys can read those, draw your own conclusions. But I just want to tell you how I'm going to change things and my approach moving forward based on my findings. Our findings. Based on he our findings. He doesn't even think about me. My first conclusion is most people on a keto diet are low on protein, too low. Because we have a meal prep course, people email us with their macros and stuff, and a lot of times I see like, you know, a 180 pound woman eating 70 grams of protein a day. That's too low. And I think protein is only a problem in pretty extreme excess. What is extreme excess, I guess? And no one anywhere will define this. It's just tough to find like real accurate. It's not measurable. Yeah, I guess it's not measurable, but no one's like done studies on like testing different protein intakes and like so it's just if, a buzzword, really. Right, so if you have like three steaks one day, you can't just chalk it up to, oh, excess, if I gain weight tomorrow, it's gluconeogenesis. Like you can't just do that. No. My thinking, and this is just me throwing a number on things based on reading, based on research, and based on just getting a feel for my own Take body. Take a whole grain of salt with this. Big grain, pink Himalayan. What I'm comfortable eating is like between 1.2 and 1.5 grams of protein per pound of lean body mass on the extreme high end. That's as high as I would go. For me, I'm about 175 pounds of lean body mass. So that would be on the peak high end, about 250 grams of protein a day. And that's really pushing it, but I don't think you're gonna see much impact on ketosis on your keto diet if you go real high protein like that. I've done it before. I've gone like consistently 225 grams of protein for about two weeks, three weeks. My takeaways from it are, I just don't feel as good, don't feel as energized, don't feel as focused. That's just me, that's my experience with it. Yeah, I, I went really high for about three weeks, four weeks. I felt really full. I didn't like look bloated, like I didn't, there was no like physical difference in like weight gain or the way I looked from eating like a high protein. So I was higher protein than I was fat, but there still wasn't like a big, you know, 
weight increase or anything. So that just goes to show for my body, at least, that high protein is fine on a keto diet. But that's not to say it's, it's okay for you. Everyone differs very, very much so. So, you know, take what we say with a grain of salt, maybe figure out what works for you. And, you know, also you don't have to eat high protein every day, but if you do it once in a while, it's not that big of a deal. Not at all. You know, this isn't as big of a concern where you should be deciding how many meals a day you eat based on the protein intake per meal, yeah, in my, my opinion. My biggest takeaway from all this is this literally doesn't matter at all. You don't need to, you don't even need to think about it whatsoever. Keep your grams of carbs under 20 net grams. That's it. Like that's literally the only thing that matters. You don't need to concern yourself with gluconeogenesis at all. It's just that everyone does concern themselves with it. So we felt the need to make this video, but it doesn't matter. You don't need to worry about it. Yeah. It's not impacting your diet at all. And the last thing I want to say is when you look at studies like this, you have to take into consideration the amount of people, how long the study was done, how long ago was the study? Is it recent? Is it really, really old? And like, who are the types of people that are in the study? You can easily conclude whether or not it's indicative of a large sample size. So like all the studies that are recent, that's great that they're recent, but there are 11 people, 20 people, you know, everyone in a normal BMI range. Like, you're not going to necessarily fit mm -hmm. into this category. When we started researching for this video, we obviously were looking for someone just being like, yeah, it's uh, 1.2 grams per pound of lean body mass. That's the cutoff. There you go. Just yeah. apply that. That doesn't exist. You just have to figure things out for yourself. What yeah. works best for your body. My thinking right now is most people doing keto are too low on protein because everyone stresses the moderate protein. I don't know why that is because I think, I honestly don't know why. I think it's because like Adkins diet just has like a bad rap, even though it was super effective and it was high protein. So now we're like, no, no, no it's not Adkins. It's not high protein. It's moderate protein. Yeah. And it's just dumb. Like I think high protein keto is fine. I feel better when I'm more moderate. Same. So it's, it's experimental again. That's okay. it, guys. That's gluconeogenesis. You down with GNG? Yeah, you know me.